Hi, and welcome to my channel. My name is Kim, aka The Booker Harlot, because I love all things Booker Prize related. And Booker season is started. We are all getting into the long list, and I hope everybody is excited for the 13 books that made the list. Now, so far, I have read Pearl by Sean Hughes. I've read This Other Eden by Paul Harding. And now I thought for this one, I would read another Paul, The Beasting by Paul Murray. I just love this cover. I think it's stunning. This is the longest book on the long list. It uh, is over 600 pages. And it is um, touted as one of the funnier, lighthearted choices. And I'm all about that right now. So while I'm reading, I will leave you some uh, video clips of life in uh, rural Canada and my life on the lake with all my fur babies. So I am halfway through The Beasting, and actually I'm more than halfway through, and I have to tell you, this book has taken me an extraordinarily long time to read, even to get this far. I'm three weeks into it, which is just so odd. Now, mind you, it is 700 pages, um, so it's a commitment, but let's start off with the premise of the book. So um, this is about a family of four in uh, Ireland, and um, Dickie is the dad, Imelda is the mom, uh, Cass is the uh, teenager uh, daughter, and PJ is the um, young son. So the family there, it is, the family is about to implode. They are going through financial hardships, and it is all coming to a head. Now, it's told in five parts. Uh, the first part, four parts are for each character's point of view, and then the fifth part goes back and forth between all four characters. Now, um, the first part is about Cass, and even though that there is this impending doom um, over the family, she has her own difficulties, and she, as most teenagers, um, uh, go through has a um, identity crisis. She doesn't know what she wants to do with her life. She's unsure of her friendships, and I really think that Paul captures the um, the voice of a teenager so incredibly well. She makes odd choices, but then I realize that these are odd choices for authentic because they are odd choices for they are they are ordinary choices for a teenage girl, but odd choices if you're looking at it as, a, as an adult. So brilliant for him. It's told in the third person. The second part is about PJ, the young boy who is having issues with being bullied. And there is also um, a cyber person who is stalking him and there's potentially a lot of danger for him. And he's planning on uh, running away from home. So the, once again, the suspense of the family imploding along with the dangers of the characters is just so sus suspenseful. And Paul Murray, this man can write characters. PJ is so authentic to me. The third part is about Imelda. And it's really with the adults that you get to learn their secrets and their histories through the next two parts. And the structure for the third part i was it's told in stream of consciousness but it's told from the third person and at first when i started reading this i was like okay well this has been done before and it's really really hard to sustain and the fact that it's in third person just means that i'm going to be even farther removed from it but this is not the case for whatever reason and i can't quite put my hands on it paul made that work 
And it really spoke to the level of panic and anxiety that Imelda has. And the secrets that um, come forth are very interesting. This is spoiler free. So the fourth part is told in the third person from Dickie's point of view. And if you think that Imelda had a twisted past, well, wait until you see what happens to Dickie. And um, it really, really reminds me of The Birthday Party by Laurent Amovenier, which was translated by Daniel Levine Becker. And if you've watched my videos before, you know that this is one of the best books of 2023. I thought it was the best book from the Booker International. I chose it to win, and I am still better that it didn't make the short list. Anyway, this is a very, very unique, um, suspenseful novel done in a literary way. And so is this, but it's not, it doesn't have the long meandering prose, but it definitely has the same sort of peeling back an onion while maintaining suspense and tension, and you don't know what's going to happen. Um, so I am really enjoying it. I think it's such a unique choice. Uh, it made the short list, and I actually think it could be a winner because the book of judges have to uh, read this at least three times, and this absolutely has that depth. Wednesday's knocking things over. Thank you, honey. There are themes of uh, climate crisis, uh, which comes through. Um, for two of the characters, Cass and Dickie, and it profoundly affects them. Now, the fourth part of the book, which I've just started reading, does a really, really odd thing in that it switches to changing from each, each chapter is a different character, but it's in uh, second person. And second person tends to be, for me, either accusatory or telling you a secret. And this is very much the characters are telling you a secret and it works so well. So I can't wait to continue reading this and get to the end. And I will leave you with uh, some of my favorite things while I am doing that. And I'll get back to you when I'm done. It's interesting that I said at the beginning of this vlog that my impressions of the bee sting was that it was the more lighthearted and comedic um, choice out of the long list. Uh, don't mind Ripley, she's just playing with her lanny. Uh, but I think that that is incredibly wrong and it's probably the exact opposite of it. So I have finished the bee sting uh, and wow, what an amazing book and it took me almost a month to read, which is really, really unusual for me. And I think I really needed to sit with it and think about each of the different sections and the different characters, because it really does have that weight to it. Now, one of the things that I think about this book that is misrepresented is actually from the blurb on the inside flap. Uh, and it relates a little bit to the title. So it says, is it possible that a single moment of bad luck set in motion everything that came after? I don't think that that is what this book is about. Um, and does that mean the fate of the Barnes family is already sealed? Don't think that's what this is about either. They are facing a reckoning. Yes, absolutely. If they can't change the past, who can? or rewrite the story they have already lived. Is it too late for a happy ending? I don't think that that is actually what this book is about. Now, uh, the title in terms of the bee sting, yes, it's quite obvious from the, the front flap that a bee sting does occur, but I think that the title is more representative, representative of the um, theme of climate change and how much our planet and nature is changing. Each of the characters deal with climate change in a completely different way. 
So for Cass, as a teenager, she is very alarmist and very angry, which I think is a true reaction for someone that age. PJ is probably the one who is most connected to nature. He is fascinated by it, and there really is a theme of rebirth in his story. Uh, Dickie is, has a usual um, parent uh, guilt reaction and sets about certain things to sort of change things for himself and for his children in such a radical way. And I think Amelda, while her character develops immensely, I think that she's too materialistic to even make the connection to climate change. Um, and uh, there is a real maturity and resolution with all of the characters. Um, there is an amazing complexity to the characters and the plot. Uh, one of the uh, pieces that I really thought summed up um, the theme of the book, and if you have my copy, it's on page 603. No spoilers. It says, you only have to trust in the people who love you, he says. You only have to open your heart up to love. And I think that is the resounding theme for this book. Um, now, there is very experimental prose and structure in the last uh, section. As I said before, uh, the last section flips from character to character, but it's told in the second person, and it very much has a confessional, um, very intimate uh, um, experience, especially with the reader. And I think it is amazingly well done, which is so hard to do with the second person. Now... The last scene switches to almost a play or a screenwriter um, structure, which I think is really, really difficult to do. Um, but it is so well done. And I have to tell you, there is a shocking twist, if not more than one, in the last scene that I didn't see coming from a mile away. Uh, and it was absolutely amazing. The last scene in this book reminds me of the opening scene in This Other Eden, the last scene in um, Learned by Heart by Emma Donahue, and the opening scene in uh, Natalie Haynes' Stone Blind. It is so incredibly done, uh, it's so incredibly well done. Um, I am so impressed with this book. Um, and there is, nothing is ever as it seems from the outside. And the fact that there are so many plates spinning in terms of where the characters are and where they're going and where they came from, and then the twist, the complexity of it, I can't imagine plotting out from the author's point of view uh, the narrative of this book. It must have taken a thousand closely. Oops. Um, and the ending scene works so well because while at the same time it is propelling the narrative forward, there are flashbacks uh, that provide resolution and clarity. And the voices of each of the characters stay true. And I am absolutely impressed by this book. So as I work my way through the long list, uh, I always give a little rating as to where they work. So I am going to say that the bee sting is going to knock uh, old God's time out of first place. So I'm going to put this in first place in terms of uh, my own personal rating of the booker. So this is in first. Old God's time is second. In third place is Pearl by Sean Hughes. In sixth place, I'm going to put this other Eden. And in 12th place, If I Survive You by Jonathan Escoffrey. And in last place, In Ascension by Martin McInnes. So thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate your time. Please like and subscribe. And I try to upload every Friday, or in this case, as close to Friday as my life will allow me. Life happens. And I look forward to seeing you in my next video. And I will link all my individual reviews of the Booker books. And welcome to the Booker season. See you soon. Bye.